growing up, um, my mom, she would always take care of us. Um, there was never a dull moment with her. She made sure we had clothes. She made sure we went to school properly. Um, just a humble spirit. Even when she was mad at someone, she would always show, you know, she, she could never keep a grudge, basically, put it that way. Um, she always would try to work it out with you. When I was younger, um, she wasn't in church. You know, me and my sister, who was the only two that was really going to church. And, um, and by that time, my brothers, they was out the house. As we kept going to church, she started to go, and uh, that's when, you know, she found Christ. Um, and, you know, she that was way before she got sick, and then after she found Christ, that's when she started getting sick, uh, before I left for the military. When we got married, um in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm hoping I'm making a good impression, you know, that she's impressed with me and that I'm not, like, you know, coming off in a bad way or whatever. But I could definitely tell that she was happy to be there. You know, she looked great. She had on the silver outfit and she looked so cute. I could definitely tell she was just happy, so that was important. And I think she was, you know, happy to see her son go down the aisle, be able to be there. So it was a good day. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Love you, Mama. She fought a good fight. She fought a great fight, put it that way. Um, you know, you name it from breast cancer to diabetes to dialysis. You know, she had every, she had a lot of things going on, but throughout her sickness, um, I've noticed, I, I, I've noticed throughout her sickness, she always had a smile on her face. Uh, she kept going to church and just, she had a humble spirit, you know? And I really thank God for having a mother like that because, you know, um, to see her humble and going through her fleshly problems, you know? We all go through, you know what I'm saying? We all go through things, but just to see it from her side, from her perspective, it really teaches me that, you know, humbleness is very important in life, you know, no matter what you're going through. Um, you know, the life expectancy for a dialysis patient is five to 10 years. You know, my mom, she did 15 years of that. So um, as, as much as I was angry for the fact that I didn't see her you know, for that last time, the last time um, of, of her life, I have to, you know, acknowledge the blessing she had and the people that surrounded her before she left this earth. You know, she was around a lot of good, great church members. Um, and her daughter, uh, my sister, she did a great job, you know, taking care of her. Um, honestly, I can say, you know, without my sister, she wouldn't she wouldn't have had the time spent the time she had if it wasn't for her you know um, my sister made sure she got the right medicine on time and her nurses too um miss joyce really thank you for that if you're watching this um you know they made sure she had the her right medications made sure if she needed anything they was there to take care of her at any moment you know 
2, 3 o'clock in the morning. My sister, you know, she's up trying to take care of my mom, knowing she got, you know, work in the morning. She got school the next day or what, what, what the case, whatever the case may be. Um, but, you know, it was a blessing just to have her for that time. And um, I was angry. I was angry at God for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. I was like, Lord, why? You know? why but you know god god doesn't make mistakes um and i'm blessed to have her for the time i did the day that we got the call i i can remember initially feeling kind of guilty because it was like really early in the morning so you know, me and my husband, we were asleep. I remember my phone going off multiple times, and I think that was his sister, you know, trying to contact us to let us know what was going on. So we once, once we figured out, like, what was going on and that she wasn't doing so well, immediately we just had to figure out, okay, how am I going to be able to get all of us back to the States, you know, so we could be with the family, and I had to like go over our finances, see what we couldn't do, what we could do at the moment. So we, me and my husband, we discussed, you know, it would be better if we just send him, let him go, and he could be with the family, and I would stay behind and take care of the kids. So I was calling, trying to get in contact with people from my command, because it was during the holidays. Here in Belgium, um, when it's around Christmas time, they get like, two weeks off, so everybody was on holiday. Um, I was just, you know, trying to figure out the procedure, you know, what I could do, what I couldn't do. Um, but we just went ahead, got him a ticket. He flew home, and I just went into mommy mode, you know, taking care of the kids. Um, it was a really tough time, because I would have loved to be able to be there, but, you know, I just had to kind of be there in spirit and kind of be strong, you know, so. You know, I, I was devastated with that phone call, you know. Um, I knew it was bad. You know, my sister, she was really, she was very hysterical when I called her. And, you know, I could hear people in the background and, you know, I knew something wasn't right you know and all I can think was no four more months four more months that's all I could think about you know why like because uh that's all I can think about we we spent six years across the year my wife and I because of the military and I only had four more months before I can see my mother again I can see she can see her grandchildren um, she never met her grandson but she did see him on, you know, Facebook Live. But all I could think was, God, four more months, you know. Um, but God doesn't make mistakes, you know. God doesn't make mistakes. Um, you know, sometimes I, I can, sometimes I dream of seeing her, you know, coming home and smiling. But I, I know I never get the opportunity. But I know she's in a better place, you know. The pain she went through, the sickness she went through, you know. Um, not being not being able to take my wife was really hard, man. Um, you know, I needed to be there the next day. So with three kids and a wife, you know, two thousand something miles, three thousand something miles away, you know, that was really hard. So you know, we we came up with a decision to, you know, just take the I just go, and that was really hard for my wife, you know, because she really wanted to support me. Although she did support me, but she wasn't there physically, but I knew she was there with her heart. And um, that was a tough decision to make, man. I was, mm, I really wanted her to be with me, but I knew the situation we was in. So, um, my sister Lily, and that happened so quick. She said we was there looking at something. She was supposed to be going to work or either going to another place where we were supposed to have fellowship. But look at God. If she had gone to work or going to the fellowship, 
should have found her mama already gone. Yes. Yes. But God graced you. Yes. God graced you. Yes. That you didn't have to wonder what happened. Yes. You saw it when it began. Yes. And it happened so quick. Yes. And I'm so glad y'all released her. Yes. Yes. Too many family members don't think about the person. Yes. They think about selfish me. Yes. But they still didn't say, we don't want my mother to be suffering no more. Yeah. God already got it anyway. Glory to God. Absent from the bottom. encouragement if you if your mother is still alive uh, all I can say is man love your mother I don't care if she's a drug addict I don't care if you know you guys you know you feel like she just hates you I don't I don't care put it this way once your mother the person who carried you for nine months once she's dead and gone you cannot reverse that you know, uh, thank God. I thank God that I, I mean, my mother was on good terms. You know, we laugh and we had great times. But if you're in a situation where you're not in on good terms, with your mother, try to make it right. Just do your part. For example, if you know your mother don't want to talk to you, hey, write her a letter. Hey, mother, I love you. That's it. Call her. She answered the phone. Hey, mom, I just want to say I love you. You know, and she don't, she try to argue, be like, hey, I got to go love her from the distance, you know? But what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to, my point is, make it right, you know, because you only got one mother, man. I'm telling you. It's something about the mother, man. You only got one. So if you can make it right, do that. You know, after you finish watching this, if, Y'all are not on good terms, just text her or, or email her or phone call her and say, hey, mom, I just want to let you know I love you. That's all you got to do. It's simple. What this experience taught me is that none of us really know when we'll get called home. And you want to always make sure that you love your loved ones while they're here. Give them the love they deserve while they're here. Because you never know. You never know when they might not wake up again. When you'll be able to give them a hug. When you'll be able to call and say hi. You never know. None of us knows. So always love the people that you have. And if you really care about them. Love them while they're there. Honor them. Um, just hold them in your heart. Because none of us knows when the last day will be. So, yeah.